Strategist for the Government of New Caledonia, who has headed archaeological research on the archipelago for 30 years. His interest is mainly focused on prehistory, traditional society, and the colonial his history of the archipelago and the West Pacific, with a strong focus on convict sites. He works on the mechanisms of appropriation of the past in processes to build contemporary identities and the development of traditional commons. In this context, he has studied the Pacific Islands as a collective structuring of space and joint organisations. So I'm very pleased to hand over to Dr. Son to get us underway. Thank you very much. Uh, um, thank you for uh, uh, being uh, tonight at this, uh, at this seminar. Um, I know it's late for everybody, so um, I would like to first uh, thank uh, uh, the coordinators of ASHA for uh, uh, choosing me and, and inviting me to make this presentation tonight. That's very kind. Um, I uh, uh, have decided to, to make a presentation which uh, will be kind of a uh, uh, Fairly, fairly wide and 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 open. Just uh, giving a series of uh, of examples and uh, putting them into into context. Um, I I thought that uh, probably quite a number of you uh, don't know very much about um, the 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 convict history of New Caledonia. So um, I thought that uh, I should uh, open a uh, uh, little bit and not be completely focused on on the archaeology. Um, I would like before starting just to um, uh, acknowledge that uh, all the work that I will be presenting has been uh, uh, done uh, um, over the last 35 years now um, through the uh, funding of the government of New Caledonia, of the three provinces of New Caledonia, and uh, with uh, the help of uh, the team I was heading, first as uh, uh, head of the Department of Archaeology of New Caledonia, and then as the director of the Institute of Archaeology of New Caledonia and the Pacific here in, uh, in Noumea. So um, I, uh, well, what you will see tonight will be uh, pictures and uh, material and uh, drawings, uh, etc. cetera, that's, uh, have been done by, by the, the team. And I want to acknowledge the, the teamwork before starting my presentation. So if you agree, I propose to start. Did it come up the screen? Yes, I can see it. Yes. Okay. So it just started page two. Okay, good. Um, so um, I will I will focus tonight on the archaeology of the convict settlements of New Caledonia um, that have been really the 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 main uh, uh, human and colonial uh, uh, motor for the settlement of the New Caledonia archipelago. But before starting, I think that it is important for uh, the audience. To remind that uh, uh, first New Caledonia had has been uh, uh, occupied by uh, indigenous uh, native Kanaks since uh, about 3,000 years, with the first settlement of southern Melanesia about 3,000 years ago. Um, French colonization started in the mid 19th century, and uh, um, appears today to have been one of the most uh, 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 violent uh, colonization process in the region with uh, uh, a lot of uh, military uh, destructions and uh, a lot of uh, uh, violence made against the native Kanaks over the second half of the 19th century. Um, after that, the Kanaks uh, were put in reservations because uh, most of the land was uh, taken for uh, free settlers, but most of all for uh, uh, convicts. The idea of the French uh, uh, was uh, that uh, uh, to settle New Caledonia, they would basically copy 
the British and uh, uh, bring to New Caledonia as many uh, 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 convicts as, uh, as possible. Um, the convict period uh, started in New Caledonia after the end of the convict period in Australia. The first convicts arrived in 1864 and uh, the last convoy uh, was in 1897. But uh, the convict system continued uh, and died really slowly in New Caledonia with the final closing of the last convict settlement only in 1931. Of course, during the second half of the 19th century, the, the transportation of these convicts from Europe and North Africa uh, uh, changed over time. The first convicts had to go uh, through uh, the long passage through Africa, and uh, it would take them more than five months to reach New Caledonia. At the end of the 19th century, um, through the passage to the uh, Suez Canal, um, the time for uh, uh, the transport was uh, uh, reduced to less than two months. All in all, uh, about 30,000 convicts were sent to New Caledonia in uh, about uh, a little bit more than 30 years. Um, 25,000 were male convicts, so uh, uh, really cl closed in, in barracks. 500 were female convicts who were basically sent here not to uh, be convicts, but to marry. Uh, former convicts in order to create families and allow the, the colony to, um, uh, to grow in terms of European inhabitants. We also had 4,000 political convicts were, who were more in exile than really uh, as convicts closed in, in barracks. The system was really one that was uh, uh, constructed by the French justice to allow, to force people to stay in New Caledonia. Uh, the main uh, uh, rule was that every convict that was sentenced to eight, year, eight years or more was basically not allowed to go back to Europe at the end of his convict time, which means that uh, most of the, the convicts had to stay uh, uh, their whole life in New Caledonia, even after the time of uh, sentencing. In terms of the geography of the penal colony of New Caledonia, um, the central depot was just in front of the capital, Numea, in the southwest of the main island and you had 10 major convict camps across the archipelago not only on the mainland but also two in the loyalty islands and one very large one on Ile de Pa in the south west east of Conte. One other uh, quite unique aspect of uh, the history of convictism in New Caledonia is that from the very, very early on, the, uh, the penal administration used the indigenous native Kanaks uh, as uh, a native police. Uh, one of their rule was basically to uh, uh, to chase uh, fleeing convicts, fleeing prisoners, but they were also very present inside the barracks, inside the prisons. They were the key keepers, and so their presence in the convict administration was very, very strong. And so basically, if they hadn't been there, the convict system wouldn't have been really able to function uh, as, as it did. So I, I thought it was a very important point to raise uh, at the beginning. Um, uh, 
as in Australia, but uh, uh, with a very long difference, of course, of time until the 1980s, it was basically not allowed to speak about the convict history of New Caledonia. It was a kind of blank in, in, our, uh, in our history. And it took uh, people like the person that you see on this photo, uh, uh, Louis-José Barbancion, who was his, is a local historian and uh, who basically spent his whole life studying and publishing about convictism in, in New Caledonia. Um, over the last 30 years, this, uh, um, this theme has, been, uh, has become very fashionable, very fashioned. A lot of uh, historical work has been done. A lot of archives have been uh, uh, studied. Uh, people are uh, now uh, proud of having uh, 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 convict ancestors, which was clearly not the case at the generation of my mother, and I don't even speak of my grandmother. Uh, I thought it important to say that um, historical archaeology in New Caledonia had to wait until uh, the 1990s to really start being made. Um, uh, our team uh, was the first in the early 1990s to really push the administration and, and heritage uh, um, uh, uh, um, uh, staff to uh, kind of accept having historical archeology. span uh, At that time, which is only 30 years ago, uh, no one was really thinking that historical archeology span had something to say or to bring into the knowledge of the convict and uh, the colonial era. It took me quite a number of years to get the first permission to be allowed to uh, try an excavation on a, a heritage site. And I did it, uh, you see where you have the round there uh, on that, uh, the place of the former building. As you can see down there, uh, at that time it was really bush and uh, basically, nothing could be seen on the surface and everybody was kind of laughing saying that I was crazy until of course after a couple of centimeters we started finding walls and uh, and and uh, uh, remains of buildings and uh, this changed quite um, immediately the perception of uh, the responsibles of cultural heritage in New Caledonia about uh, um, this topic, uh, they suddenly realized that maybe uh, uh, there was an archaeology, uh, historical archaeology to be done in New Caledonia. The people that had much more difficulty about that were basically architects in, uh, in cultural heritage. They really thought that um, um, I had been lucky with uh, that excavation, and but uh, basically I wouldn't find anything else uh, doing other excavations. So we 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 choose uh, another site that I will come back to later on, and um, we decided because we had this complaint uh, of uh, the architect saying we have so many photos of buildings why do you do archaeology on some of these buildings it's a loss of time and a loss of money and so we chose um, the building here in the middle and uh, as you can expect we started excavating and then we uh, find out uh, found out uh, that there were a number of constructions around this building and uh, new addings after the photo that of course uh, uh, were interesting for uh, the knowledge. Um, this site that uh, um, I have just presented is located on the southwest coast of the main island. It is called Teremba Fort. And I will start my presentation with the archeology span of that fort because really it's there that uh, we experienced the different aspects of uh, 
what could be found in the convict buildings and related buildings um, connected uh, to uh, New Caledonia. The Teremba Fort is an important uh, uh, um, place for the history of New Caledonia because it was the first uh, uh, fort with convicts that was attacked during the uh, most important Kanak, indigenous Kanak revolt, which took place in 1878. And uh, so the, the, the place has, uh, is a landmark for the history of New Caledonia. Uh, some parts of, uh, uh, when we started in the early 90s, some parts of uh, the, uh, the fort were fairly well kept, like uh, the prison that you see here on the left. But most of the buildings were really in a very bad state, and uh, most of them were half in, in ruin. Um, so what we did is was uh, on this side to have a number of years of, uh, uh, of programs to excavate inside, outside the, the fort in order to gain an understanding of uh, what would be uh, um, architectural and construction remains in this kind of tropical environment. Um, a lot of the information that we got was totally unexpected to everybody. Um, the most important being the amount of pavement that uh, were still present in uh, this, these different uh, structures. Um, in, in a, a, a context where uh, what was expected at first was that uh, so much of these buildings had been ruined and people had been so much uh, uh, getting material out of these old buildings for new constructions that basically very little would be left. I will take the first, my first example as uh, with the, the, the house of the director of the fort of Teremba, so um, the, the chief of, uh, for the control of the convicts. Um, of course, the upper part of the building uh, has been destroyed since long by cyclones and uh, uh, un, unused. When we started, what was remaining was really the, the, the infill of the basement. And we excavated the different part of the, uh, these, these infill, which allowed us to reconstruct part of the former building. Uh, you can see here on, on the, the left uh, uh, part of the, uh, the brick uh, wall on the right, uh, down the right part of uh, the, the stone wall. We also were able uh, to understand uh, how um, the, the basement underneath the house had been uh, organized and reorganized over time and how progressively uh, uh, it had been uh, closed to prevent too much air coming in. Uh, one of the most interesting discoveries in this building was clearly that uh, uh, we uh, identified underneath the main construction a former building that we haven't had, uh, haven't found any trace in archival material, uh, any trace in any photo that we have. So um, as you can see, it's completely uh, in different directions compared to uh, the, 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 the later building. And uh, at this stage, we have we have no clue what uh, what this first building was uh, was about. But it is clearly underneath the director's house, so uh, we reckon that it was probably uh, the the first building, the first house of uh, the director when the, the the fort was created. We have excavated in Teramba a number of other um, buildings. Uh, what has appeared was clearly that uh, uh, when the, the, the buildings were destroyed or collapsed, 
before people started really getting into uh, collecting material for new housing, the floors were still present, the, the structure of the housing was still present. But in other cases, as here, uh, you have the, the construction, the, the remains of the bakery, um, people were desperately uh, in, after the abandonment of the site, were desperately looking for bricks. So um, uh, what you can see here on the right side, um, the, the, the red arrow is uh, the infill, the top of the infill. And so we excavated this infill in front of the two uh, um, uh, uh, ovens uh, of the bakery. Of course, the ovens have disappeared since a long time because people have stolen uh, uh, probably in the early 20th century uh, all the bricks. But um, the, the front of the two ovens uh, with the stone masonry is still uh, uh, present. But as you can see, the floor itself is, uh, uh, um, is very damaged. But uh, people, when they took the, the, the tails and when they took the bricks off the floor, um, basically left uh, the marks, uh, which allowed us to reconstruct these floors completely and uh, identify that these buildings were very well constructed, even if you, you had a, a convict uh, environment. Other platforms were uh, uh, not made with bricks or tiles but were um, uh, made with stone and stone masonry, indicating again, a uh, fairly uh, complex and, and well uh, worked out architecture. One of the most challenging uh, uh, remains of uh, Teramba was the pier, which uh, had been seriously damaged over time by cyclones and bad weather. And uh, uh, it was possible uh, uh, with excavation on the sides to find the limits of the former pier and uh, to propose uh, a first uh, consolidation and protection of this very damaged uh, site. I now, now turn to um, the main convict area of New Caledonia, which is Numea, the capital starting with um, the convict prison quarter of the peninsula of Ducos, which is just in front of Numea. Here you see uh, two, two photos of uh, the convict period. Here is how the building looks today. Uh, it's very damaged, but at the same time, because it has been abandoned without any new use since 100 years, Basically, uh, uh, 25 years ago, it was still in, 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 in the state of abandonment of the early 20th century. This was all original, and even the beds were still original from the convict uh, and prisoners time period. Our work uh, has not been uh, on the inside part of the prison, but on the outside part. At first, we thought that uh, nothing had remained because of the construction of uh, new roads, etc. But uh, by doing a couple of, uh, of test bits, we realized that um, the, underneath the, the present uh, um, soil level, there were uh, a great number of perfectly in situ remains. And um, it appeared uh, that uh, uh, here, like in Teramba, people had done a lot of work on, on the outside of these buildings to channel the water flow. Uh, it's something that is not clearly visible on the historical photos, but that appears to be something very, very uh, constant in the different buildings. People had problems with water. We'll come to that later on on another example, and um, had to uh, do all these uh, 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 channels in stone and mortar to be able to uh, get, get rid of uh, the water flow, uh, flow during uh, uh, bad weather. 
Apart from that, we identified a number of uh, um, uh, walls, uh, basements of walls, some of them uh, not clearly visible on, on photos. Here on the, on the left, you have MR2 and MR4, which appear to be a, a follow up from, from the building and that we hadn't identified on, on historical photos that those clearly show that you have a transformation of these buildings over time as well. Clearly, each of you has experience on, on that. But the main uh, um, center of, uh, of uh, uh, the, the convict, uh, uh, convict depot in New Caledonia is the central depot on New Island, which is just in front of Numea. And um, one of the first buildings that was constructed at the very start of uh, the, the, the depot was the bakery. Uh, you had French convicts. Most of the, what they would be eating was bread. And so that was one of the first uh, stone buildings that was, was built. We started working on it, not through the archeology, span but we were asked to confirm that the ovens uh, that had been closed uh, behind the walls uh, at the, the beginning of the 20th century were still there. And here is uh, how they look like once we uh, did tear down the, the masonry that had been put in front of them. We had to work on the uh, uh, backside of the bakery, which allowed us to um, find out that uh, the infill of the backside was uh, really serious, a couple of meters deep, and was fairly complex. Um, the first really important level that we found that you see here about uh, one and a half meter deep was uh, on, on the bakery side was, uh, had again uh, a water flow uh, um, presence. And uh, on the other side, you had a, this, this nice uh, dry wall that uh, had been built all along this, uh, this portion to really uh, keep the, the talus slope uh, uh, still. When, uh, 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 when we excavated, we clearly could see that this layer has been uh, in place for probably quite a long time. When I say quite a long time, it's probably, it has remained like that probably for at least 40 to 50 uh, years without any major change. But when we excavated underneath this uh, um, layer, we discovered that we could reach the basis of the building. And very surprisingly, it, we hadn't uh, anticipated that. Um, this was the layer of the first occupation. And when the building was constructed, there was a, uh, uh, a door leading from the inside of the bakery to this backside. This backside was probably used just a couple of years, not more. And we uh, concluded that it was filled. You see all these bricks on, on the left side with the photo. It was filled by bricks and earth because it was dampy. It was always full of water. And so people decided that they had to uh, 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 close completely uh, uh, stone the, the door that we have found and reopened now, and to prevent the water to, from getting during cyclones and bad rainy way, uh, weather to be uh, able to, to get into the bakery. So um, we have see here a, a nice sequence of uh, rapid fill, then a standstill, and then uh, uh, for, for probably half a century, and then a uh, uh, a slow fill up to uh, the 70s, 1970s. At the back of the bakery, uh, we had these, this platform. Uh, we had done a few test pits and found uh, some, some floors, but we were asked to do a, a proper excavation of that 
that place before uh, uh, the opening of a museum at the bakery. And the excavation uh, led us to identify different buildings that could be seen on maps and could also be seen on uh, some of the photos of Il Nou. One of the uh, uh, important buildings was, uh, was uh, a series of rooms of housing that was probably for uh, the people working in the bakery with uh, a large corridor as the photo you can see down there. Nearby, uh, we had a, a, a large kitchen with all sorts of uh, different um, small rooms. And aside of that, we had the remains, part of the remains of a house, which is the one that you see on the photo on the left, top left. This uh, building uh, is now cut in, has had been cut in two by the Americans when they opened a, a road there. And this is what came out. So uh, well-preserved floors, remains of the, the beginning of the, the, the walls, series of steps. Uh, um, here you have uh, what seems to be a pool for uh, the mixing of the floor and, um, and, and the bread. And interestingly, we uh, found during the excavation this, uh, um, this kind of, of uh, uh, layer, which uh, appeared uh, to, to be um, a dry brick wall. And so this gave us the information that um, this building was not made of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, wood or, uh, or, or uh, uh, of bricks but had been made whole, been a bit too quick, had been made of, of uh, dry bricks. It's the first, I, I, I mentioned this because it's the very first time that uh, we have indication of dry bricks in, in the building of the convict area in, in New Caledonia. My last example uh, will be on mining sites. Um, the convicts were used from the very early on to be kind of uh, free workers, basically slaves, uh, uh, just say the word, uh, uh, free workers in the mines. Uh, it was nickel mainly nickel mines, chrome mines, and um, they were used like slaves in agreements between the convict administration and the, the, the head miners. And um, the, the work was really, really harsh. Uh, we haven't uh, worked on uh, um, convict uh, barracks of uh, these uh, convict mines, but have been asked uh, by the Northern province to work on the remains of the house of uh, the director of one of these uh, uh, mining sites. This is uh, on the northeast coast where you had a, a nickel smelter. Interestingly, the, the, um, the remains of the house, the wooden part of the house have been dismantled in the 1930s to be reused in the house that uh, modern house that you see here. Our excavation allowed to uh, find, uh, uh, again, a great number of uh, um, floor remains of um, um, uh, water channels of uh, uh, buildings, one on uh, um, rearrangements, one on top of the other. And uh, even in this case, we realized that uh, one of the main uh, uh, problems that people had to confront on an everyday basis in these housing was really getting rid of the water. And this is something that uh, uh, the archeology span has really showed very clearly in all these buildings and that hadn't been really identified up to now. I know that archeologists love uh, archeological material. So I'll just uh, uh, stress uh, some of these, uh, these remains that have been found in the excavations. Um, 
I have talked to you uh, uh, repeatedly about uh, BRICS. Um, it's interesting to notice that uh, in the early period of uh, uh, the convict uh, construction, um, all the material comes from France. We haven't found any uh, amount of bricks that have a label that could show that they come from uh, or Australia or New Zealand. It's all uh, made in France. Uh, and in this, and in a second stage, you have local uh, um, brick making factories that are created by the convict administration to produce bricks in New Caledonia. But uh, on on the bricks, as on the tails here, yeah, that um, uh, we haven't found any connection with productions coming from uh, Australia or New Zealand. Concerning the tails, it's really interesting to notice that people arrived uh, with ideas of uh, architecture that they brought from France and uh, that had, they had already used in French Guiana, where you also had a, a convict uh, uh, settlement. Here, the tails uh, uh, were, again, brought from France, but people realized after a couple of cyclones that this was the worst kind of material that you could really use to cover the roofs. And so uh, from the 1880s onwards, all these tails are basically removed, put into big uh, uh, um, uh, pits, like the one that we are excavating here on Il Nou, and replacing them with iron roofs. In some of the buildings, we have been able to find a uh, remain of, of uh, um, uh, painted masonry, which uh, clearly correspond to what you have on, on some of the, the photos of the interior of some of uh, these uh, uh, administrative rooms. A lot of uh, iron remains. Again, uh, a lot of them seem typologically to correspond to what comes from, from France, although uh, 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 a number, uh, quite a number of this material has not been studied in detail. Again, uh, we were expecting that a lot of the the the, the material for uh, uh, um, for eating would be of uh, um, uh, Australian origin. When you look at the amount of boats that come during the second half of the nineteenth century from Australia and New Zealand compared to the number of boats that come from France, it's the difference is really, really uh, uh, um, serious. But here again, all the those plates that uh, we we have found in, in Teremba and elsewhere have, uh, uh, um, how you say, uh, um, uh, marks that are clearly uh, of uh, French origin. Some of them are of British origin. Uh, um, Great Britain being the, the major world producer of these porcelain uh, in the 19th century. We have also found some uh, um, marks that come from Eastern France and from Germany, and that might be uh, corresponding from our, uh, to the very first imports of this material before the loss of Eastern France by, by France in 1870. Same thing goes for um, the, 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 the uh, uh, um, how do you call it? Uh, uh, the alcohol bottles um, that are also derived from, from mainly from France. Same thing for the, the bottles, uh, glass bottles. You see here, uh, um, a lot of these bottles are alcohol. You see Pernod et Fils, which is the, the main alcohol uh, uh, um, producers and that you see on the photos of, uh, uh, of people, uh, especially uh, uh, the administration uh, drinking alcohol in the second half of the 19th century. 
some of these administrators uh, lived quite well. Uh, when you see the, the quality of some of these glasses, is uh, it's not high, it's not crystal, of course, but uh, it's a fairly high quality uh, material. So um, uh, while the convicts uh, had uh, really uh, uh, basic uh, uh, eating material, the, the, the administrators uh, of the convict settlements, this has been found in the convict settlements, it's not uh, uh, from the, the colonial administration. So these uh, administrators of the convict settlements uh, uh, had a nice uh, everyday material for, uh, for their living. Of course, the rest is much more uh, uh, usual to you. Um, and um, uh, here you see uh, for the pipes, especially um, a larger influence of the import of pipes from uh, uh, Great Britain, from the US, uh, from Europe, uh, a little bit from, uh, uh, from elsewhere. And so here you have more mixing, but probably this is related to the fact that uh, a lot of the exchanges that were made uh, by uh, the, the people coming from Australia and New Zealand were through uh, items like, like pipes. You see. You have it in the in the in the archives. It's very well presented. Some religious items, some lost coins that allow to um, have uh, uh, again indication of the kind of coins that were uh, used in New Caledonia and that came directly from uh, from France at the time where uh, New Caledonia and uh, the French colonies uh, of the Pacific still hadn't their own uh, uh, specific coins, as is the case today. And then um, material uh, about everyday living, be it uh, here you have, I have taken the example of uh, those uh, uh, um, uh, uh, bones, top bones uh, for, uh, uh, of sheep and of, of cow. And that's, uh, uh, inform us about everyday living and the kind of meat that uh, people uh, were eating uh, in, in those sites. This brings me to my conclusion, uh, having kind of uh, 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 tried to give you a, a series of examples of uh, the kind of uh, excavations that we have been uh, uh, conducing here in New Caledonia. Um, I thought in my conclusion to highlight that uh, uh, there are a, quite a fair number of places where everything still remains to be done. One of the uh, hotspots of uh, convict archaeology in the future will certainly be Isle of Pines, where you had the political convicts, where you had uh, 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 um, normal convicts, and uh, where uh, half of the island basically was taken by friends to put convicts in, and where the number of, uh, of remains of buildings is still quite impressive, uh, well preserved, and uh, no excavation done uh, at this stage, uh, or very little. And uh, here is a, a, a whole um, research uh, area to, to, to be open. Same thing goes uh, for the mining sites. Uh, we have not really tackled those mining sites yet, but uh, um, some of them have been basically abandoned at the end of the convict period and have never been really uh, 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 used since then. So everything still is in place. The holes are there, the, 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 uh, the, the remains of the buildings are there. Uh, even the tools are still uh, floating around on, on these sites. So this is certainly a, 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 a site to, a kind of site to be studied in the future. But uh, the colonial history of New Caledonia is not only about uh, convictism, it's also a lot of free settlers. And here also um, there is a, a lot of work that still needs to be done. And of course, uh, um, all these people, a lot of them uh, 
ended up dying before being able to go back home in, in Europe. So um, we have a lot of uh, uh, burial grounds of convicts, of administrative staffs, of free settlers. And uh, here I give you the examples of, uh, of the burial of uh, James Padden, uh, the people who have been working on, uh, uh, on uh, um, uh, uh, sandalwood uh, will know this, uh, this man, uh, who was important in the New Hebrides and afterwards in New Caledonia and who uh, was buried in New Caledonia uh, in the early uh, 1860s. Of course, apart from research programs, um, very regularly you have uh, bits and pieces of this uh, colonial heritage archeology span that appears uh, uh, in rescue with rescue archeology. span and uh, here, like everywhere else in the Pacific, um, we have a serious threat on uh, these convict sites because a lot of them are uh, really built uh, near the seashore and climate change and, uh, and uh, the sea rising are uh, really putting them into threat. You may have noticed during uh, the, uh, the slideshow that uh, on some of the photos you had quite young archaeologists. It's because we have used um, uh, heritage classes of uh, teenagers who uh, participated quite a number of our uh, historical archaeology field schools. Um, we thought that uh, it was the best way for them to first discover their history and uh, then to be, as the next generation, the best uh, advocates to protect and uh, talk about and be proud of this uh, history, uh, this part of the history of New Caledonia. So uh, hundreds of uh, 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 former uh, uh, teenagers in New Caledonian schools have been doing uh, heritage classes with us on, uh, on uh, historical archeology span excavations. And now, now for some of them, our uh, 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 teachers, our uh, politicians, and um, help us to uh, uh, protect this, uh, this heritage. I would like to finish by just uh, informing you that the New Caledonia government has decided uh, uh, last year to start uh, preparing a dossier for a World Heritage nomination of some of New Caledonia's convict sites uh, to uh, uh, UNESCO in the future. So this is a work that is just starting and um, we will certainly need uh, help for everybody interested and uh, ready to give us advice and help. And so uh, you might uh, hear from me in the future uh, to see if uh, one or the other uh, of, of the people in the region might be interested to participate in preparing this dossier. The reason for uh, this choice is that, as you have understood, uh, even more than for Australia, heritage and convictism for us is just what happened to our grandparents and for some of the elders here, our parents. The photo on the left is the small lady there, the small child is my mother. And she's holding the hand of my grand grandfather who was uh, a convict uh, from Algeria and uh, who was the father of my grandmother. And on my grandmother's side, all her uh, 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 pa parents and grandparents uh, are all of, kind of, uh, of uh, convict descent. So um, convictism and the history of, um, uh, of convicts is really an integral part of our identity today has shaped what New Caledonia is today 
between the Kanaks, the Europeans, the Asian settlers and uh, 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 workers that came here to work once the convict settlements had been closed. And so the reason why the New Caledonia government has decided to prepare this dossier is just to honor our ancestors and what they did to uh, allow us to be here today. That's the end of my talk. Thank you very much. Thank you, very, thank you very much, yep. uh, Christoph. That was fantastic. Um, if anybody has a question, would you either raise your hand um, using the reactions button at the bottom of the screen, or you could actually pop a question into the chat? Okay, Anita number two. Oh, you're on mute, Anita number two. You're still on mute, Anita Yusuf. I don't think we've muted you, Anita. I think it's at your end, but perhaps we'll come back to you. Does anyone else have a question? Okay, there's a question in the chat there um, from Dennis Gojak. Would you like to actually speak to that question, Dennis? Uh, I've got a bit of background noise here where I am, so hopefully you can hear me. It was a great talk, Christoph. Thank you very much. Um, my questions about how the convicts were used, other than in those big mining industrial complexes, were they used in other sorts of industrial ways, either making mass consumer products or um, in any other way? How did they spend their time for these 25,000 people? Uh, thank you for the question. Um, basically, they were used as workers. So uh, aside from the mine, where uh, they were not under the control of uh, the convict administration, for the rest, um, they were used to build uh, roads, to build buildings, to build bridges, to be in uh, 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 stone, uh, uh, how you say, um, uh, stone quarries um, and uh, to be uh, uh, they were also uh, rented to um, uh, uh, farmers to work in fields to raise cattle um, but they were not really producing anything on an industrial basis um, what they were allowed for example to uh, for their own sake to, um, to uh, do uh, artwork on, uh, on uh, uh, shells that they could sell or uh, um, do carvings, those kind of things for their own sake to, to gain a little bit of money. But basically the system was costing more than it was really producing money. I don't know if I have answered your question. You have. Thank you very much. No other question? Um, if I can just jump in, I mean, I think everybody who's listened to that, Christoph, would be um, very taken with the the similarities between 
the French system in New Caledonia and, and you know, whether it's Tasmania or New South Wales or wherever in Australia, but there are so many common elements, you know, the use of convictism as a, a strategy for colonization, the use of convicts as a labor force, all of that kind of stuff. Um, so when you said you, you might be looking for help, you, you might be, be careful for what you ask for, because there's probably a whole lot of people here will be dying to give you advice and, uh, um, and, and things which you can you can draw on, which which obviously, you know, the Australian convict sites listing drew on French examples and Russian examples and so on as, as justification. So uh, I thought it was a, it was a really great, um, really great talk. Nice to see you again. And um, congratulations on what I take is probably still much of a solo effort in terms of historical archaeology in New Caledonia. Um, yeah, I'm I'm. Uh, I'm I'm getting slowly to retirement, so um, <laughs> so uh, I I know that uh, uh, there there are some other uh, uh, local archaeologists that uh, will be getting into uh, into this hopefully in the in the years to come, um, and uh, I'm I really hope that uh, the project of having. Uh, uh, the dossier started, which will take a decade. I mean, it will it will be a long process. Uh, will uh, uh, will hopefully uh, give a, a, a kind of new boost to uh, historical archaeology in New Caledonia and especially uh, historical archaeology related to convictism. So mm. there is so much to be done. And um, uh, over the last thirty years, I have seen some of the, the building decaying so quickly that, um, yeah, they, there is uh, some urgency to, to have some of these uh, sites studied uh, fairly quickly. But not by me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Christoph, Anita has managed to put her question into the chat. And her question is, given the location of New Caledonia in the area of cyclones, is there a disaster management in plan for in plan in place? Thank you very much for the the question. Um, at this stage, not really. Some of these sites are protected uh, uh, by the uh, in in the local uh, heritage list of the the different uh, uh, provinces. It, it's a provincial duty. It's not a, a duty for. Uh, the New Caledonia government or uh, for the French government. So um, it's, we, we are uh, getting step after step. And so uh, the, the question of a disaster management plan is not uh, really one that is uh, at, uh, uh, has reached a, a, a satisfactory stage yet, unfortunately. Great, thank you. Um, Richard Morrison, I think is next. Thank you, Christoph. That's most interesting. Um, my question is about the penal philosophy there um, imposed by the French compared to the British system, which included um, religious um, religious theme as well as um, silence as a means of controlling and supposedly redeeming um, the convicts. I'm wondering whether there were features like that not necessarily those, but features like that of the French penal system on New Caledonia. Um, there, there was a, um, um, there, there was a, a religious, uh, uh, especially Catholic, uh, uh, presence in the the convict administration. So um, the convicts could go to church, those kind of things. But because the French uh, um, philosophy, the, the Republican philosophy was one where uh, you had already a, a strong separation between church and, and uh, uh, political uh, or social system. It was probably not as, as, uh, uh, as central as you would have it in, uh, uh, in Australia. One other reason is, I believe, uh, related to just the chronology is that uh, um, you have a, a different situation at the 
at the beginning of the 19th century and at the end of the 19th century. And so um, here you have a, 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 the arrival of convicts uh, between the, the mid 1860s and the late 1890s, uh, where uh, you have a, a very strong, in New Caledonia, you have from the very start of, of the colonial period, you have a very strong input of the Freemasons. And so uh, uh, um, uh, a permanent conflict between the missionaries and the Freemasons in terms of uh, philosophical thinking. And uh, so the, the, uh, uh, the, the political convicts that come here uh, in, uh, in 1873, they, uh, because of the Paris revolt, the Paris Commune, are mostly Freemasons. And so they they really uh, um, allow uh, these this this tradition to really uh, get rooted into um, into the the convict system, and so uh, it's probably on that scale it's probably different from what uh, what happened fifty or seventy years before in yes. Australia. Thank you. I did I did have one other question um, related to the number of convicts free or escaping who might have come to Australia. Um, has there been any work on, on that or is it negligible? Uh, uh, do you know? Um, you have a, a number of convicts that uh, managed to escape to Australia. Probably not a lot. I mean by that compared to what you have in French Guiana, probably uh, less than 100 probably but what is certain is that because of the the permanent confrontation between the french and the british at that time period every convict escaping new caledonia would be greeted with open arms arriving in sydney or brisbane so you have it in the newspapers and uh, you know so it's it, it's um, so it was this kind of political play between the two and certainly they would not be sent back to to New Caledonia. Okay, thank you. I think Anne McConnell is next. Thank you. Um, sorry. Whoops, what's happened? Thanks, Christoph, for your talk. Good to see you again. Um, yes. I've got a. Um, a question that really um, relates to a bit of work I'm doing at the moment. <laughs> so it's a bit more related to Dennis's question. I was wondering whether there was um, much timber industry on the island, um, particularly in the early period, and if so, whether there's many heritage remains from that? So yes, there, there was a, a very big timber camp from the very early on uh, at the southern tip of uh, the main island in the in a big bay which is called Prony, which lasted for uh, about 25 years and who which basically uh, cut down all the trees uh, of that huge uh, uh, marginal area so um, there are still remains um, there has been very little archaeology done on that uh, a number of uh, restoration uh, projects have been done on some of the buildings or some of the ruins, but by, uh, by a team of uh, uh, passionate uh, local uh, guys, so uh, not completely professional. And, um, but what is to be found around are the remains of, uh, you know, the, the, the chariots, the, the 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 railways the yep. um the the roads uh, bringing down the timber those kind of things okay so, uh, and that that um that camp furnished uh, um uh the the timber for the town of Numea for uh, uh, at least 20 years Okay, that sounds quite similar to Hobart. We have um, a fantastic complex of um, early colonial tim industry um, sites like saw pits and roads and log chutes and early sawmills and things just on the foothills of Mount Wellington. Um, 
Yes, yeah, so I'm just interested to know where there's other similar stuff. So that's great. Thank you. And good luck with your World Heritage nomination. <laughs> Thank you. We have a couple of questions in the chat from Eleanor Casella. Eleanor, would you like to pursue those questions or would you prefer that I just read them out? Am I coming through? Hi. <laughs> yes, we can hear you. Oh, brilliant. Excellent. Um, hello from Hobart. Um, hi, Anne. <laughs> Great question. <laughs> um, yeah, look, I was wondering, thank you very much for a really interesting um, presentation. Um, you mentioned at the beginning, the, what was it, 500 female convicts? Mm -hmm. um, I was wondering um, who was permitted to marry them? Are, were, they, mm -hmm. were they assigned out to like free convicts or only the officers and 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 also are there um like villages or or domestic sites that are associated with the um you know more penal institutional compounds do you have like a series of kind of more family domestic settlements around the area yes um so the the idea from the start of, of uh, copying basically the british uh, and what they had done in Australia was really to make New Caledonia uh, um, a settlement colony. In the French uh, colonial history, you have only two settlement colonies. One is Algeria, the other one is New Caledonia. Just those two ones. But in the French uh, jurisdictional system of that time, uh, females were not allowed to be uh, uh, sent to a convict sites, although it was done for French Guiana. And uh, so uh, very quickly, of course, people realized that you had all these males, but no women to build families, to make couples. So the French uh, justice went through a number of uh, uh, female uh, prisons in France and proposed to uh, these uh, 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 women in the prisons, prisoners, um, to be uh, uh, re redeemed from their accusations if they agreed to go to the other side of the planet and marry a convict. And so about 500 women agreed to that. Uh, we're sent to New Caledonia and we're taken up by um, religious, uh, uh, French Catholic religious nurses. They were sent to the main uh, 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 colonization village or settlement of the main island, which is Burai. Burai is in the center of the west coast of the main island and uh, is the place where you had the, uh, uh, the largest uh, uh, space where uh, uh, convicts could be put to land uh, on, on properties which were about four hectares for one convict. And so the nurses uh, organized uh, what could be uh, called speed dating, uh, which meant that uh, the, the lady would stand in a kiosk and you would have 30 or 40 males queuing and they would be allowed to talk to this uh, woman uh, for a couple of minutes. And uh, after they would have uh, all gone through, she would say to the nurse, uh, well, um, I want number 255 or uh, I haven't found anybody. And um, so the, the, the weddings were done uh, by groups. So you have uh, some days where you had uh, uh, 50 couples that would be married the same day at church. And uh, you had much more weddings in Burai than in the capital uh, uh, Numea at that time, at the end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century. 
And those uh, uh, female convicts, female prisoners, uh, had to be married to or freed uh, uh, convicts or convicts that were still in, in, uh, uh, under their, uh, 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 their condemnation, but had been uh, good enough to be able to be put already on a property. And to, to finish up, uh, some of these couples uh, ended up having a, a fairly nice life. A lot of them had a great number of children. Uh, when I say great number, it's between seven and 15. And uh, I usually say to my students uh, in, in the bush, there was nothing really much to do at night. <laughs> at that time <laughs> and uh, um, and uh, but some of them uh, it turned really really pathetic really terrible i mean some of these women ended up uh, being uh, used as prostitutes by their men uh, some of them uh, 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 killed their husbands uh, etc so uh, you you had some uh, nice love stories uh, but other ones who turned really really bad Thank you. We have an artifacts question um, from Elizabeth Bonchek. Elizabeth, uh, if you're able to unmute, perhaps you'd like to ask your question. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, hi. I was to have an interest in glass beads and how they are taken up, um, um, you know, in places like PNG between um, European visitors and um, indigenous people uh, absorbing use of glass beads into things they're making. And I was just wondering whether you had found any glass beads in, in your excavations um, at all? Um, not really at that time period and in relation to convict sites, no. You have glass beads earlier on, but uh, uh, not really at that time period. The, the glass beads come in uh, uh, at the end of the, the 18th and first half of the 19th century. But uh, to my remembering, uh, we, we had no, no glass beads in, in, our, uh, in our sites. We have found them in, in early uh, uh, historical indigenous sites, but, but not in convict sites. Thank you, thanks. And our next question is from Catherine Barr. If you're able to unmute Catherine, you might like to ask your question. Uh, thank, thank you. Uh, thanks for a great, great talk, Christoph. Um, just wondering, my question was related to um, artifacts and whether any evidence um, in the archaeology was found of interaction between the convicts and the Kanakta um, indigenous community groups. Um, the, the, the interactions were every day, basically, all the time. So, uh, which means that uh, um, uh, uh, Kanaks and, and uh, um, convicts were interacting all the time because the Kanaks were basically the guardians of, of the convicts who were working uh, on roads or building bridges, those kind of things because also uh, uh, the, the, a lot of freed uh, uh, convicts uh, at the end of their penal time uh, basically had to uh, 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 find work and a lot of them uh, would be uh, uh, fleeing into the tribes and asking to the, the indigenous community to stay in the tribes and getting married to indigenous people. Uh, other ones uh, would uh, um, be uh, doing exchanges with the indigenous communities with one very damaging uh, um, exchange uh, uh, item, which was alcohol. It is very clear that uh, uh, convicts were instrumental, uh, freed convicts were instrumental in uh, selling most of the alcohol uh, uh, that was uh, uh, used by the by the Canucks was so, sold 
by former convicts. And this led to a point where it was getting so damaging that uh, the colonial administration had to uh, 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 put a rule that it was forbidden to, to sell alcohol to, to the Canucks. So the interaction was, was constant. And uh, uh, in, in some oral tradition, it's also very clear that uh, um, in, 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 the most, in the worst situation for convicts, the Canucks felt really that the, the life of these guys was so horrible that they had to help. And so people would uh, bring them uh, uh, fish or bring them something to eat because the people could clearly understand that the convicts didn't have enough to eat in some cases, especially in mining. So probably it's a different situation from, from uh, Australia because in New Caledonia, the, the, the population density all in all, it was probably much, much larger. And, and you have to remember then up to the, to, to, to the, uh, the 1960s, um, more than half of the population was indigenous in New Caledonia. Thank you. So I, I, I haven't completely answered your question about uh, items. So in in the uh, in this uh, Kanak sites, you see a lot of uh, 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 glass, a lot of iron, a lot of uh, 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 alcohol bottles, um, ceramics, pottery, indigenous pottery disappears completely replaced by um, iron pots, those kind of things. And that's really very strong starting not from the French colonization. During that time, most of the, the traditional items remain, but it's starting from the, the convict period uh, uh, that you see those uh, items really replacing uh, uh, very strongly the, the indigenous items. That's great. Thanks very much. Okay, do we have any more questions? Anybody wanting to ask anything else or we'll raise your hand? Uh, can anybody hear me now? Yes, you're, you're on <laughs> oh, mute. Sorry, I think I also thought that I typed my question. I don't know if you read it, but <laughs> I completely disappeared off the the meeting. So my question was, um, Chris, Christoph, um, before I start with a question, thank you so much. I can listen to you and your, your presentation and your stories um, every day. It's just fantastic. And it would be really nice to um, visit you over there and uh, do some uh, real archaeology, but you know, that's for later. Look, my question is uh, related to um, the conservation and protection of archaeology and um, all the sites there. So uh, the question was about whether you have a um, disaster management plan, given that you are in this um, area prone to cyclones and uh, extreme weather conditions. Um, as I said, it's we are quite uh, um, far from, from arriving to a real disaster management plan at this stage. There has been some process put in place. There has been uh, some uh, 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 some rules, but uh, um, it's uh, the responsibility of the three provinces of New Caledonia to really look after their built heritage. And so, at this stage, uh, they haven't gone to uh, 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 to uh, uh, really putting enough jurisdictional. Uh, 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 rules in place to to reach uh, um, a disaster management plan, but it's clearly something that is uh, on the top list of uh, what uh, I'm trying to to get done for uh, preparing the dossier. And so um, we'll uh, 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 might probably uh, uh, in the years to come ask uh, for some help in this. Uh, in this uh, 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 writing, uh, knowing that um, uh, 
uh, it's not uh, that I'm against um, the, the French specialist, but uh, it's very clear that uh, uh, between Australia, New Zealand and New Caledonia, there are much more uh, closer uh, similarities in terms of uh, the problems we have with conservation than uh, you know, the frost or uh, the, the, the North European uh, uh, weather forecast. So, um, yeah. but yeah, but yeah, to answer your question, we are, we are not at this stage yet. Right. And, and has there been any level of monitoring or have you noticed any changes or any, is, has there been any loss of um, um, remains or, you know, material evidence as such? Oh, as you can imagine, over the last 30 years with the, the uh, nearly all the buildings not really being really uh, 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 going through any process of conservation, we have seen loss. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, uh, uh, walls falling down, roofs uh, just uh, uh, collapsing, uh, those kind of things. So uh, 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 trees uh, being becoming too heavy on, on the roofs and just the whole thing uh, uh, falling yeah. down. And, and I don't even talk about uh, proper uh, uh, human destruction to 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 get the the bricks and and some of the some of the stones but yeah. um, uh, this is one of the reasons why we have been pushing so hard to to get this um, political project of having the dossier uh, on world heritage it appeared to us that this was the only way to really have uh, some some say and have politicians hearing that this is important to preserve. And I'm, I think about uh, one of the last pictures I saw with uh, the air photo of the, the prisons of um, Isle of Pines. Um, those buildings are magnificent, just really, really beautiful. But year after year, when I go to just monitor just myself, it's getting bad and worse, and uh, since a few years, there is no money to just uh, clean the bush. So uh, you can't even access some of these buildings anymore. I mean, you have to go uh, yeah. uh, uh, with uh, with a, a knife, uh, a bush knife. But um, yeah, so uh, yeah, definitely, uh, I know that some of the buildings will be unfortunately uh, uh, in a state of preservation so bad that they will not be able to be put on the list, uh, even if they could have been 30 years ago. Right. Thank you very much and good luck. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. okay. I, think, I think that brings us to the, to the end of our um, seminar this time. Thank you very much, um, Christoph, for a fascinating and informative presentation. I'm quite sure that um, for everyone, many of the images that you showed resonated with us. Um, in some ways, they were very different, but they were also very familiar. Um, the artefacts, the architecture, um, and indeed some of the challenges. Um, I, I loved your description of trying to persuade architects that archaeology was worthwhile. Um, but there were quite a number of offers of help and, and volunteers in the chat. So hopefully some of that may prove useful to you in future. And I would also like to thank everyone who booked and attended um, this seminar on behalf of ASHA. ASHA runs these seminars um, for our members, and it's great to see people turning up and engaging. But particularly, I think we should do a virtual round of applause for our speaker, um, who was in fact fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you for uh, staying so late. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks everyone. Yes, have a nice evening.